Welcome back to Railroads Online. I am River, and we are still trying to get 200 barrels of oil. I have run into a little bit of a logistics problem. After all of our problems in the last few days or hours, however you want to look at that, with trying to get oil, let's take a look at the map, I'm sorry, to try to get beams and rails up to the coal mine. We redid a lot of sections of that if you watched the other series. I'm going to try to keep those a little bit more in sync. But we've done a lot of work. We got our coal mine route, I think, in pretty darn good shape where we can handle a lot of cars. And then I came back down here to the smelter where I'm at now. So I took an extra trip and everything went well. So I took my third trip. We needed four trips to get enough coal that we could then get the ironworks to produce 150 of the things that it produces, tools and the steel pipes. So when I came here, though, I was down to 22 rails. Right now I have 55 because I put 39. Or maybe I was... Yeah, I forget exactly how this works, but maybe I'm off on my math a tiny bit. We, we, we've had very few rails, so we've put... I put 39 of these iron on these flatbed cars. My new longer uh, bypass rail has is, is come in very handy. If you haven't seen that, it was rebuilt in one of those other rail building improving exercises. So that would leave us to... So we still have 100 raw iron after I took the 39 out. And pointing to the fact that we had less than 30 rails that I needed for the next trip up there. So we have about 130 coal. So I have a good amount of coal up there, but I don't have the 150 coal I need. But I can't take the last rail trip up there because now my cars are all filled with iron that I needed at the hall. Now we do need the iron down at the ironworks. However, according to my spreadsheet, I still have 85 iron down there for some reason. I'm not sure... I tend to disbelieve my thing because I'm thinking, well, it shouldn't be that much. And it's certainly possible that I forgot to update it when I did something. But we need to take coal down to the ironworks anyway. And coal, you can take like a thousand coal down there. It doesn't matter. It's like this iron ore here. So as much as we want to haul down there. So since these cars were right here, having dropped off iron the last time, I would like to take these up to the coal mine. And I think I have all my switches switched. Uh, all the way around, as a matter of fact. I switched those to be actual bypass. We're not going to come back in here. But I'll probably take two trips down there, if that's true. Here do we see the first one. Now, this is the longest trip we have on the whole map. As far as supplying anything to anywhere it goes. Let's see. Yeah, we're, I'm going to give it, give it its all, even though it's sort of a waste. I know this is a long enough trip that having this little bit extra there, that's probably enough, won't hurt us. So this is going to be an epic journey for us. Let's make sure everybody, I haven't tested this since I started the server, make sure everybody's attached. Now, I'm starting to bunch these guys up. So like I hit the brakes, I put the brakes on the last two cars in this case. I bunched all the train together and then I put the brakes on. So... All of our cars are coming with us. I hope that's not part of the issue of me losing cars all the time. <laughs> I'm doing that as much a bit of a test. So far, it's working out. I haven't... Everybody's come with me, but I haven't really been in any... I haven't really been testing it that much. <clears throat> Since you guys last saw me, we were just fixing rails for the most part. So I, I definitely like this. I like the fact that I can get it going in and out each way. This was a good place to put it. I like the fact that I can fill it with cordwood. When it comes to filling this guy up with all the, you know, that's a lot of wood this thing's carrying. Um, I really like the fact the firewood is on the correct side. That might not make such a difference with Betsy, but having this like this where the cordwood or the, or the logs get dropped on the other side is a very good thing. Right, we look like we're in good shape. It's a little bit of a short train. I guess one day we could go up to 10 cars, but let's just see how we make out today.
all of our signals should be good because I was just hauling back and forth from there. At least till we come back to here. Once we come back, we'll have to stop and flip that so we can go south. For some of you, it'll be the first view of this whole new thing, so... Show you our new bridge right up ahead. Should probably fix that. the old one left in place. There's the nice shiny new one. Relatively well curved. It does slow us down for some reason though. I don't really understand that, but it seems like the curve itself is what's slowing us down. Having this all one slope all the way up, definitely, or pretty much all the way up, like this is a little steeper here, but then it gets less, that's the steepest part, which isn't too bad, because then before it used to get even steeper, now it gets, all well, this part is kind of one slope up to here, so that's it's less, if anything. It's still pretty aggressive, but then once we get past this point, we're, let's see, it's a lot less steep, go around that turn. Nice and smooth. I see that block, I know on the steep part. I know that sounds silly, but it's hard to tell what's steep along this whole stretch. That block, I know I'm on the steep bit to turn up my fuel a bit, or turn, put on the brakes more on the way back down.
redid these bridges. We also straightened out a few sections along this thing just to kind of make them nicer for those of you who didn't watch those. But yeah, we put a bridge in here, but then just kind of made this all, redid this bridge so it's a lot more level. And also, the, there, this was where the bad, there was a kind of a bad turn right after this bridge. You can see it starts turning to the right, but now it's just a lot better. A couple levels smoother and not quite as sharp. The turn is what it is, but it's, it's definitely made a lot smoother. No worries anymore. And right up here is where I straightened it. You can see it kind of, the trees were cut here, so it's, it's a bit straighter. Could have been straighter yet. Uh. It's all right. Yeah, if you notice, my fire is getting low, which is one of the reasons I threw that in there. I've come up here a couple times, or the last time even, and I know this happened. So what I want to do is, once we get past this, there's a little bit of a flat spot right there. I'll just stop real quick and throw some in. So we redid this bridge, and then there's a sharp turn. You can see we're heading into this uh, dead end you know, kind of pass here, or whatever you want to call it, this dead end valley. Let me put on the brakes. All right, and then we'll just all right, that's all it holds. So let's throw the rest in there. Let's get on our way again. A little bit of a downhill, finally. So. Starting's easy, but we can make it to that point, and then off we go down this bridge. We want to be on the brakes. It's pretty steep, like 6% grade there. But if you remember the way it used to be, it used to turn real sharp and go... Again, I left the segment so you guys can see what it used to do. And I just... I was going to make a little spot of stone there, but I kind of just made it all bridge the whole way. Yeah, it's just that one part. Now, this is all level, so... 
too fast. It is a turn. But and once we get past that bridge, you got to start watching out for it's just sharper turns and it is uphill mostly, but or it's all uphill, flat maybe some places, but either uphill or flat. So we can go at a pretty good clip now, but and I did straighten out a couple places along here. That was this is the big one bridge. Nice, definitely an improvement, big improvement can't fly everywhere but some of it's just the nature of this windiness if you're going to follow the path and This is where I started straightening it out a little bit. Like I redid this turn, and then this whole thing is straight. Kind of the same. I have the same mental issue where I steered away from the from the rock. Um, this is you know straight past that rock. So I got this is this is as gradual as it can get. I think I derailed at 50 before. And now we can. And we should be okay. Let's see how we do at 44. Even slow it down. But the turns really do slow you down. This is the worst, the worst turn. Really nice and smooth. It's not fast, but again, you're up in the mountains. I'm okay with the reality striking. turn makes me nervous. There's nothing particularly wrong about it or I'm not sure that there's anything I can do about it too much, but see how I start getting going faster right there. It's just such a sharp turn, but then the problem is I get going up this extra little bit of hill I have right here. It's just bogging down right there. And I got rid of this so that I could put our, my markers right across there. We don't need any fuel or anything. There we go. We've made it up here. We should have, like I said, 130 coal, which is at least two trips. Well, it is two trips worth. What does it say over there? Can't read it. Nah, even without the YouTube. I'm pretty sure it says 130. We'll be over there in a minute. But yeah, I'd in looking and thinking about it, if we're going to have trains like with the tenders this big, we don't need a firewood station up here. If you're running Betsy. They, see, the problem is like this trip here, if you're in Betsy to go, you're basically, I'll show you the map once we get out of the train here in a second. I got my markers all the way across. Now, this one kind of works out pretty well because the steel rails, that this thing's so long that it, even if you're stopping for each beam, it's pretty friendly towards just getting your steel rails off wherever you want. So you got you got so really these markers are here for the for the firewood. Oops. I mean for, for the firewood. Where'd that come from? For, for the coal and the other. Now the other thing I've noticed is this wheel right here, this back wheel of that locomotive, is where we want to stop. Right, so I'm right on that. That's the let me hop out. All right, that's the distance that a regular car would be from this from this car to here. That's like it's that added length. That's how short this one is compared to a regular car. 
it puts us you know pretty close to underneath of this. So we could start getting this. How many? Yeah, 130. So I'll bring that down to it says 120. Well, actually, I'll bring it down to 123 or so. And I'll flip up one of the two. Alright, we'll flip that one up since it was the last one to make one. I don't know, it doesn't make that much difference, but. 121. There we go. For the sake of the length of the video, let me do that. You know, we should have 10 of 10, and I will be right back. Okay, all loaded up, and I made a mistake. I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I flipped the dam when I was doing this car, and I ran back up there, and I got into the cab to pull it forward, and I noticed one of these chutes was still down. I, th I would have swore I put it up, but I guess the tape will tell if I go back and look at it. Oh, no, I wasn't recording it, so... Yeah, so now instead of being at 80, right, if we had, we got 50, 10 per car, we're now at 74. So I lost an extra 6, which isn't the end of the world, because after we drop off this 50, we need 100, right? And so one more rail car should get me back up to 104, and so that means we should be in pretty good shape. I'm going to stock this guy up with 8 more firewood. I don't know why. Like, the first one seems to miss sometimes. All right, there we go. So we should have... Oh, you know what? we got to do one more thing. We'll let that heat up for a second. Got to flip the flipper. I'm getting better. I haven't not flipped the flipper, but as soon as I say that, I'll forget to flip the flipper and drive out and derail myself. All right, so we are ready to go all the way down. We got to stop at this smelter and flip those switches. We should be good to go. This is, let's take a look, right? So we're all the way down here by the coal mine and we're going over to the ironworks, but we have to go all the way up to the smelter along that right hand side, eastern side valley, and then come all the way back down past the sawmill, kind of past the oil field, but right above the ironworks there is where we have our all way intersection. So. Without further ado, let's uh, get her rolling. Okay, everything looking good. Yeah, I'm not sure. That, that's I, I just I'm glad I didn't lose more than ten because then I'd have to take a whole another trip up here at that point to get to the 200 barrels. I mean, it's yeah, it's all part of the fun, but you hate to cause yourself extra work. An extra train trip won't kill me, in other words. Yeah, this gets, you can see how that's pretty well sloped. You can see it from this side easier from the other side. This train definitely has better brakes. That wasn't such a tight turn, and I don't think there's too much I can do about that either. This is actually harder for me because the brakes are more powerful than the locomotive is. But to try to get us going at a good speed, right, between no brakes and some brakes, it just seems like you're either barreling ahead too fast or, and then with some of these turns being tight, it just makes me nervous. can't just leave it on no brakes as soon as I get to this point I think it's a little bit steeper and it's just hard to notice that if they give us signs I definitely would like signs that I can make a just a simple sign like up three or down two meaning you know you could warn what the actual grade was the other thing I wish is we had some kind of a level indicator in the cab because I feel like that's something that you would have with the balls of your feet, right? If you're standing there or even sitting there in the train, you're going to be able to feel whether you're facing up or down. And I've always thought in train games, that's 
that's one thing that's missing. Like when people ask, well, what's the difference between this and a, uh, like a race racing game and being in the real car? Or, I mean, I've been in a racing car, but not really a racer in any way. But, um, you know, the real difference between driving a car and like video game is you, the feel, the, the butt of your seat. You feel the acceleration on a turn. You get to know, am I excel, you know, is, is this car able to handle that kind of a turn? I don't care if that's your street car, right? It well, depends on how you drive, I guess, too. But you, know, you, you can feel how hard you're hitting the brakes. You know, we're... Now, I guess when it comes to the brakes in the simulator, you can feel how hard you're pushing down. But that's not the same thing as feeling, you know, whether you're accelerating or not. So, you know, accelerating doesn't mean forward. Accelerating means in any direction. We tend to, when we talk about cars, use the word decelerate. And accelerate to mean going forward. But an acceleration is just a move and a force that's being applied to you in any direction, right? We're at the level spot. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. I'm dreaming about acceleration. Nice to be able to carry that momentum in there a little bit without that turn at the bottom. I do worry about that right there. That needs to be smoothed out a little bit. Top part. I didn't work on that. It's one of my flu few true minor, you know, deep link breaking places. Most of this we should be good going at 20 the whole way down, right? There's, it's a little bit sketchy by that one bridge that we just straightened out the turn, but and that's the reason we need that rock there to tell us when to hit the brakes a little bit. It's a little bit steeper here for a bit.
this is the sharp turn that we can now kind of breeze right through. Right in there, that's that's not a good thing. Slowly hit the brakes. And that's that's the danger with coming down here. Yeah, leave the brakes on a bit. As long as that thing's giving those sharp vibrations. That's not even up to my rock yet, right? So that and I was going a little bit more. Remember, I was leaving it at like 19 before, and that time I kind of left it at. 27 which you can do but I should consider putting another warning marker of some sort I'm not sure if you can see it yet but that's why I have this rock here because all this is kind of fine we're even starting to go a little bit too slow in a sense but once we get to here we need brakes I think we needed a little bit of brakes because I had too much power on the engine back there but if I just left it at lower, like 15 or 19, it would have probably been okay. But see, this, we actually, this is, and it doesn't look any different, right? If you're just buzzing along here, you're just happier than, as happy as can be until you're going too fast. And then you derail down here, right where this turn is. moves out right there so Oops, uh, just just steep enough down to that turn I could probably maybe readjust that like go all the way down here with the maybe we could make it sloped better but I don't know. it seems pretty realistic I like the way it is otherwise and then now we can see the we're coming up to that intersection which is nice that we can see that ahead Kind of give a little warning. I guess we're, we're going too fast. We'll probably take this pretty quick, but I'm not comfortable with it enough. I haven't really come down here to know all the quirks. There we go. It does get back to level once we get around to this turn. It's nice when your turns are level. So then I think you can well uphill's not bad either like downhill turns are a bit nerve wracking though let's give it a little you notice we're almost running out of fire temperature again so it's not the end of the world that we have to stop by the smelter flip that switch we can throw some more wood in there I guess that's well, I probably would try to make it up further. Because we still have... Well, I don't know. Once you lose that fire temperature, though, that water temperature drops pretty quick. Just wondered on the way, as I make more round trips, you know, these things do tend to become routine. Like, okay, I got to stop here, put more wood in. Definitely would be nice if they would let us put wood in. I'm not sure exactly why they don't. Let's pay attention. We are on a hill now. See, so that's where that part's not quite as steep. We could come down it, but it was still getting us to go pretty quick. If you watched the Build It episode, you'll know that we had a thing in the track here. I had to delete all the track and, like, kind of spam click in this area, but... I was launching cars up into the air, just trying to put them back down on the track. I don't know what, I don't know what caused that. And I had driven over it before, but just all of a sudden there was like a thing there. So I'm not 100% sure why that is.
stop on this hillside, which I don't like overly much, but with this train, I find it's it's not so bad. With the Betsy trying to hold a or bet, Porter number two, if those were trying to stop here, it's a lot sketchier, especially if you got that 13 car lumber and rails train, even though it is empty coming back down. Just take it slow. We're not in too much of a hurry. Better to take it slow than have to re-rail. Now, the only other thing is we're not going to... We would just have to back up, which it's not going to derail us here. Right, close enough. Ah, fill up the thing. Yeah, that's an argument for using this kind of gravel near these switches. I think I've fallen off there before. Now, the other thing is... See this... Get the wrong way. There we go. So now I can take two trips back and forth. Now that's not going to be, we're going to have to flip more up by the, we're going to have to flip more switches when we get over to the sawmill, I think. Not just one, really. One or, probably one or two, because I think maybe the, the last time I was up there was in that rail yard, so let's come here and All right. Yeah, that thing that that you can fake that yellow thing out sometimes. <clears throat> Where it'll get stuck, even though it's a zero down here, like that was all the way up there. Everybody still with us? Good. It's not the most impressive train, but I didn't show you. But we really don't have that much money either, so it's it's, it's not like I can afford to buy that many more of these hopper cars, which I forget exactly how much they are, but I, I know they're not super cheap. Oops, we went wrong way. Now, we also have this brand new bridge. I left the old one in place. Give you an idea how much more massive this one is. It's, this is by one area that I consider borderline would you really build it this way in life? I've kind of allowed myself this somewhat completely unrealistic thing. I mean, I don't know about completely unrealistic. I mean, you could build this in real life. Whether it would be worth the money, I don't know. But we're really struggling on this hill. I checked all the brakes. I don't know if I checked the brakes on the tender, but I never set that, I think. There we go. We're still making it anyway. Oh, my boiler pressure dropped. I didn't even notice. I thought I'd put the wood in there fast enough. Okay, well good. Now the pressure's back up, so that explains. Look at that. Isn't that nice compared to that sharp turn right there that is derailing us or causing problems? And... Yeah, I'm not sure if you would go through building all that bridge in real life, but it's certainly, it's certainly nice.
These are going to be flipped to go into the sawmill. It's a shame we can't get these down there. I guess I could do better. The big issue is, did I write down the right number of this iron? I would be bringing that iron down. But either way, it's a shame we can't just deliver whatever we want everywhere we want it, right? But there's actually logistics we have to work out. <laughs> All right, I probably should just run over here, I think, and check. Yeah, see, this one's in the wrong spot. And then by the time you get to this one... I think that next one's right, but this one... And then this next one up here into the yard is going to be in the wrong position. And then the one up ahead. Can't see. I think it's in the right position. Yes. So I could barely see that. I'm not sure if you guys could. Probably be a little harder on YouTube, but. So that should, well, then we're going to probably, I don't know. I forget where I went down south the last time, but we'll have to be careful going into the, going into it. Now, I'm wondering if we have 85 iron there, we might have to just sell some of this iron eventually right and i'm just thinking i know there was there's a issue where the lumber we would have to sell because you need the beams in two different locations but you only need the lumber in one so you're always going to get extra lumber and maybe it's the fact well we don't need we only need the rails at the coal mine All right, we're going to try to make it all the way down there, with, especially because we're on the flat without putting more fuel in. That'll give us a good idea if we have to stop. Because if we can make it up to the top of that hill, see, I don't know if we would in the future, right? Like, so we're, if we're better off stopping maybe by that curved bridge, the U-shaped bridge, putting some fuel in, get up to here, you know, that type thing. I think we'd be okay, especially if we have them all switched and we're just flying along but yeah trying to think about it Let's see there's that other thing yeah so i have the sheet that's available online that tells you where all this stuff is used yeah i mean there's an issue with the steel pipes and the tools that's the other thing i was thinking of so in other words, you're going to eventually end up having to sell off some tools. Ah, uh, but... Yeah, yeah, I think you'd have to sell off some tools, though... Yeah, maybe they did rebalance it in a different way. No, I think you'd have to sell off some tools. Let's go down here and see how much of what we have, and then we can always decide what we're going to do next.
this one's the wrong way. The bummer about this one being the wrong way. Oh, geez. Is that it's not really close enough <laughs> to the other one that you would run down there, but it's not so far away. Like if you look just right down there is the all way intersection. So we're probably going to have to stop down there. Possibly. We definitely can't fly into there. There's too many switches for my brain to process and not have issues. At least not at full speed. Anyway, by the time I can see them and make out which one it is and all that, like it's, just have to go slow into that one. And I want to fix that so it's a bit better. Just say it's, that's on my list of improvements to make. That little nicer. Nothing wrong. It all works, it just doesn't look that good. So let's slow down. Alright, so this first one should be leaning to the. To, I mean, it's just they're, they're hard enough to see. Yeah, now the first one's leaning the wrong way, so that's good. At least that ends the debate. The second one's leaning the right way. Oops, not too much break. Yeah, see, I, and then you can't even hardly see those other ones. I can see that one is leaning the right way. Oh, no, no, no. just back up a foot. I don't know that that would cause a problem, but I'm not going to trust it. Wrong way. All right, then this one's the right way, and then, yeah, see, there's, there's enough of them down here, too, that they're just sort of hard to see. Yeah, so that is the right way, but this this other one yeah that's the right way too okay but see there's one further down that's for the for the log thing that might might throw you off one way or the other you got to make sure you see them all right now somebody suggested a big huge roundabout and i think it's it's a matter of preference i mean you know roundabouts are fine at the same time you would you would have things further away right like so in other words if i had a massive roundabout to be able to get all these switches in you're going to be running further to be able to switch all the switches just go does that make sense this does, this is probably about as compact an intersection if you wanted to do one as you can get so it's like now that I flip this, right, like my next, many of my next trips are going to be straight in and out of here. Like it's just, it's a matter of when you shift gears, which is why I don't like having to bring this coal down separate, which is why I'll go back and get the second load of coal. Because when you think about it, once I'm done with all this switching, that next trip is just going to be flipping the two flippers. You know, I'll go all the way up there. And then the problem is I don't really have that much more coal, so then I'm going to have to stop and then go back to the smelter, get another load. But that's, say, hey, that's part of the, the thing. And I could have been a lot more efficient about it. I do have enough rails up there. If I could have just known that my spreadsheet was accurate, we'll come to... Oh, yeah, and you know what? The spreadsheet is looking fairly accurate from here. I can see some some iron piled up. So then the question is... Well, I guess I just, I have so much iron because I've been taking stuff up to the, I don't know if it's 85 is what my spreadsheet says, but that's a pretty good pile of iron in the shadow there. Yeah, if that's not 85, it's, 
Well, if it's not 85, then I could have brought the iron down. Yep, it's 46. See, so I could have brought that iron down here. Okay, 10 in a pile. That makes sense. But that's all right. We, we're here now. We got the coal. We need the coal. Really not that. The only, the only quote, waste was... Uh, I want to back up a little bit. I don't want to... Missed my marker there. Not sure how worried about that marker I am. To be quite honest. Right, let's take a look at the money. Now we have 2,000. The other question would be do we want to try to do more cars? So let's pull forward. Not reverse. Running out of steam. Throw some more in. Now we should be good to go other than flipping that flipper. I know I, ha I do have marks, so I should just be using them. Oops, get stuck in the firebox. I have done that. Probably would be very unpleasant in real life. Is that going to be? Let's test it out. We'll... Yeah, it's going up. So even if you're just barely on it on those steps, you're still good. It'll make me a little nervous. I should have saved it before I did all that, right? Not that the coal in it of itself is that valuable, it's just... Alright, so now let's go see, and I'll update my spreadsheet here. We'll see, what we need to max out what's going on over here before that stops. So. Nope, we're in the middle of production. So let me pause it for a minute, I'll go flip that flipper and we'll see where we end up here as far as stuff goes. So I'll be back in one minute. I waited till the thing got done processing. I got a drink of water and relaxed after our long trip. But we have no iron beams left and we have four coal. So a little bit of an imbalance down here. And then as far as the tools go, we have 60 tools and uh, oops, 46 steel pipes and that's what I'm talking about where we start getting an imbalance and remember we had this snafu with the tools Where we deleted a few of them with that rail car thing, which they then fixed so that's no longer an issue Now one of the things I want to do Well, you know what let me throw Just to max this out. I want to do a little experiment and that'll end the video Right two three so we should be up yet yeah, full full steam ahead completely full with wood and the temp fire temperature is you know pretty close to as high as it's going to get i want to see how far we can make it and then we'll end the episode there right maybe not we're not going to run out but let's just see where a good spot to stop it's going to be somewhere up by the smelter the question is can we make it all the way back up to that u-shaped bridge which is a level spot before the steep hill and then I feel like if we can make it there, we might be able to make it the whole rest of the way to the coal mine without having to stop and, and put wood in because of our F mode thing. How's that sound for a plan? I'll take the episode kind of fairly well over an hour, but I might try to condense a little bit of it where I didn't speak. We'll see. I, said, I think part of a train driving game, though, is experiencing the rails, right? I know it could be boring for some people, but... Could always jump ahead. And I don't say that much on those trips. I try to keep it, for the most part, to comments about the tracks and how I'm handling it. But yeah, apparently they fixed this thing where it was clipping on the top of the thing, so you don't have to build this up in the air any longer. Not 
sure if I need to change it now that it's this way. It works. I'm assuming maybe they changed it. Now this doesn't work, but we'll see. Take it slow, making sure we got everything. So this one's for that one. This gets confusing. And this is the one I've derailed multiple times. But then this one's now right. This is the one you need to worry about. This one's for here. And it's right as well, too. I guess you need to worry about both of them. This is the flipper. I see, this is nice. We should be pretty well set the whole way with switches all the way back up to the coal mine. And then we'll just have to flip that one on the way back out. That was nice and smooth. Turn it down a little bit. A lot of times I turn it down like that, and you notice you don't even really see it. I don't know. Is there a difference in our speed between doing 70 and 45 on the regulator? Maybe if it was uphill, there would be, but. Going through there pretty smoothly. 
I've gone through here pretty quick before. I don't think anything's changed. I think we're going to make it right past the smelter, no problem. Might even make it to the top of the hill by the U, I think. That's my bet. When the fire temperature gets down to 100, we have to stop. And then if, there's, if I know there's a hill coming up, I might stop at the best flat spot. Definitely changed. Before I used to have to be at like 30 some breaks. Well, on the on the bridge itself, this part was flatter. So, like in other words, it's all a little bit steeper. Well, this whole upper section is a little bit steeper, and that bottom section is a little bit shallower. as you can see from the difference in the bridges there. So we've just about run out of fuel. So how far can we go on 400 fire temperature? When you think about it, we put in eight pieces of fuel. Now we're about the same fire temperature as we were, and we went across the map. So when I say that the firewood's not that big a deal, that's kind of what I mean. You know, we waste more just loading the darn thing, in a sense, than you do actually go in places. And if you can't remember to bring eight or 20 pieces of firewood with you and you get stranded someplace, I'm not sure what to tell you. I think we're going to storm right on past this. It's not that far up that hill. I think we'll be okay. Still at 280, right? So we got it has to go all the way down to zero before our fire, our water temperature starts to drop. Which is why that's not a temperature, right? If the fire temperature went below 100, then the water temperature would drop. That's how that works. Maybe not drop fast, but it would drop.
That's nice. That's <laughs> so much an improvement. That's a huge improvement. Got a smile on my face. I think I could push this a little bit further than this turn, but I think once I get up towards where that switch is and it's level, I think I'll hop out and throw some more wood in and or call it a quits, and then I'll throw some more wood in and continue on my way, make another trip, turn this noisy thing down. Right, we're down to 200. I mean, I know I could go a little bit further, but this is, once we get up around here, Kind of see, right? Kind of ends. It stops going uphill at some point here. Probably right up there. When you're on that switch, it's level, so I'll stop right about there. Yeah. So we, like I said, we could go a little bit further, but this way I can just blaze, blaze up the hill the rest of the way, and I think I will be able to make it the rest of the way. And that's part of this is doing that, right? Let's uh, throw this in and then I'll say goodbye. All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. We've made it back to here. If you want to see what I'm about to do, it's just going to be going up, getting another load of coal, driving it down there since all these switches are flipped. And, you know, well, then after that, I'll probably take my, you know, the loads of the iron down there with you guys because I want to show you each of the trips that it takes to to get this done not the repeated ones but so i'll have another coal trip after that and i'll have another rails and beams trip right because i got to get another load of coal going and then uh you know we'll go from there i should have considered more getting more rail cars but we'll see we, we've got two thousand dollars we'll see how it works out by the end we're almost done with the ore right we all got two more trips with the coal and again, at some point, I just enjoy it. I feel like this has been a pretty good uh, good amount. Of, it's certainly easy to drive five cars around. <laughs> so and then some of the money, here's our money. Did I look? Well, I don't think. Uh, we're up to 3000 So how much do these cars cost? All right. Just out of curiosity, I kind of forget. Their hopper car. Yeah, 850 So I'd really want to get 100 in a, in a shot would make a big difference, like 10 cars, but to get five more would cost $4,000. So yeah, I, I don't think this is fine. I'll take these two trips. We'll get up. This is actually a fair amount of money. I didn't look exactly how much, if my list is right, it's you know, $15 per coal times 50, right? So a hundred would be 1,500. So half of that, 7,750. So we should be in pretty good shape. There you go. Well, I'll continue on my way. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and expect me to come back when I'm back down by the smelter after just having taken another coal trip. We'll get that much more coal down there. And then I think our logistics bottleneck will be pretty much done at the ironworks, right? I'll just be able to take those other, whatever other iron we want down there. And we should be then working at the ironworks, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So Thank you for watching. Thanks for all your likes and subscriptions. I do appreciate it. Helps the channel a bit, I guess. I don't know. I don't pay too much attention to it. As long as some of you are here having fun with me, that's what counts. <laughs> so enjoy your railroading. Have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.